Thank you, Brandon. So traumatic events um, have a couple things happen. We feel really intense emotions when we go through traumatic events, and we also establish pretty strong, potent memories. And it's these memories um, that are really interesting to me. And, and when we have these traumatic events, we kind of go through and develop two types of memory. And the first type of memory we call extrinsic, or excuse me, explicit memory. And it's, I like to call it the story memory. And it's the story that we, of the preceding, the event, and the postseding sequence of things that happen. And we play it like a movie in our head. It's very detailed, um, sometimes even has music. Um, uh, hopefully not for the traumatic events. But um, so we have this very detailed thing that we can pull out and kind of revisit fairly often. But along with that, we have emotions during traumatic events. And those emotions are stored as well. Um, the preceding emotions, the emotions that occur during that event, and the emotions that happen in the moments, minutes, hours after that event. And those, those memories, those emotional memories, are stored in different parts of the brain. Um, and there's some overlap. So I want to tell you a little story uh, to kind of exemplify this. About two years ago, I started a writing project. And the project was, I have six brothers and sisters, so there's seven of us total. And what I thought was we would write a story about the same event from seven different perspectives. And this was really to look at memory and how age affects um, how we view certain things. So I'm typing along, and I'm about 1,500, 2,000 words into it, and I get blocked, uh, writer's block, right? Classic thing. And so the way I deal with writer's block is to start writing about something else right away because uh, it it's just gets me, keeps me going. So the first, and I usually write about the first thing that pops into my head, and the first thing that popped into my head was the moment I learned that JFK had been shot. So that, that memory goes like this. I was um, at Gary Elementary School in San Francisco, and I was sitting against the south wall of the building. It's kind of a beige stucco building with my friend Angela, and we had brown bagged it, and we had just taken our sandwiches out. And I remember the day really well, just e extremely well. It was clear, which is unusual for San Francisco. Um, and the sky had this beautiful kind of cornflower blue that faded into this pastel blue. And it was unusually warm, which is also unusual for San Francisco, which means it was over 55 degrees Fahrenheit, right? That's warm in the city. Um, and this woman, this teacher walked up to us and she had a blue blouse on, very much the, like the color of this shirt. And it's kind of why I wore this shirt. Um, and she had a khaki skirt on, um, but she also wore a very disturbed look on her face, and she just blurted out that JFK had been assassinated. And I'm typing along, right? So, right, you get the idea. I'm typing this memory out to get rid of my writer's block. And I stopped writing, and what, I, what happened was I started to re-feel the emotions that I felt when this occurred. And it was a series of emotions. One, it's that emotion of disbelief. Um, like, you really can't believe this is happening. And, and I have that very same feeling, and I think a lot of us have, when 9-11 attacks occurred, um, when my cousin was killed. It was, it was that just shock of, of something that had happened. And that was followed by this horrible sense of an unspeakable act that had happened. And, and then that was followed by this really deep emotion of loss. And, and I cried, and I cried at all of those events, and I started to cry when I was writing this two years ago. And so I, I'm like, Gah, I need a break. So I went and I Googled JFK assassination, and in about five seconds I realized that all of my friends who said I'm a nut job were right, that there's something wrong in my brain. 
um, and some of you may have guessed it by now, when John F. Kennedy was shot, it was 1963. It was November of 1963. I was born in December of 1962, which made me the ripe age old of 11 months. <laughs> so you see the problem, um, <laughs> right? I clearly could not have been at Gary Elementary School. Um, so I gave up writing altogether at the moment. And <laughs> I've gotten back to it. But, um, but really, this kind of prompted me to do a little bit of, of, of soul searching. And I kind of came up with two questions. And one was, first of all, was why was my story memory so inaccurate? Because I swear this happened. I mean, I, and you probably have had the same feeling, but I know this happened. It is so accurate, so clear in my mind um, that I have no doubt. And even today, I doubt, I, I have this, this conflict about whether it happened or not. Um, so, and I think that really results from, uh, and it's easily explained or, or somewhat easily explained by the fact that when we go through traumatic events, unspeakable events, we have to create a story that is speakable, that we can tell people in our lives, and more importantly, that we can tell ourselves. It's a speakable story. So our mind pulls together a patchwork of things, um, bits of memories from here and there, and does a little creative connecting, and creates a story. And it's a story we live with. And it's the story that we recount, and then we kind of, when we recount that story, we stop at the emotional part. We don't pull those emotions up, right? You know, we get a little bit clumped, and then we start talking about uh, details about the assassination or something. Um, but the second question it really brought up was, what is the function of emotional memory? Why do we have this, and why is it accurate? And it really is accurate. I, I felt the same types of emotion in all three of those traumatic events for me. And I think the take-home message here is that emotional memory, among other things, is an early warning system for us when we're in danger, when we are in an extremely traumatic situation or an extremely dangerous situ situation, it brings to us an awareness, a knowledge of something that's unconsciously there, um, something that might be happening. And a lot of us have a hard time putting a finger on that. Some of us call it a sixth sense, this odd feeling, instinct. Well, I call it intuition. Thank you very much.